Okay, so let's move on. Back to basic size. The basic size of paper is set in stone. Every type of paper has its own basic size for calculating paper weights. The easiest way to know what the basic size of a particular stock is, is to keep a chart handy. The chart does not change. Everyone in the printing, graphics, and paper industries reference the same chart. We will be concerned with the following three types of paper, so you need to write down their basic sizes. One, book, text, offset, and opaque. So we identify book and text to be coded stocks and offset and opaque to be uncoded stocks. But for our purposes, we're going to lump them all into the same category. We'll call it the green category because they're all going to use the same basic size. And you'll see that on the next slide. Bond and writing stocks, they all use the same basic size. So we're going to call them our orange category. And then we're going to throw a third category together of all cover stocks because they have yet another different basic size. So this chart here on the left hand side is an example of what you might see in a textbook or in a paper catalog that will identify the basic size of different types of paper. Now this is a small sampling, but you can see how many different types of paper there are. I would like you to take a minute to try to identify what the basic size for book, text, offset, and opaque are, they're all the same, what the basic size for bond or writing stocks is, and what the basic size for cover stocks are. Make sure you write them down somewhere in your notes so that you can keep them on your cheat sheet for exam number three. Okay, so the answer, uh, book stock, if we find book and go across is 25 by 38. If you find text, Offset and opaque anywhere on this list. Offset is right here. It is all the same. Bond and writing. We see bond here. Bond is 17 by 22. And if we find writing down the bottom, it is also 17 by 22. And last but not least, cover stock is 20 by 26. It doesn't matter what kind of cover stock it is. If it falls into the category of cover, we're going to assume that it has a basic size of 20 by 26. Okay, so why is the basic size of paper important? When we talk about paper, we say it is 20 pound bond paper, which is our copy paper that goes in a printer, or 80 pound cover, or some different value, but it always has a number and it always has a pound. The weight, or the basis weight of the paper, which in the case of the example up here is 20 or 20 pounds, is calculated using the basic size of paper. The way that we identify this is the weight of 500 sheets of stock in its basic size is the basis weight of the paper. So if a mill is manufacturing paper and the standard size is 25 by 38, if they take 500 sheets of 25 by 38 and they weigh it, whatever it weighs is the, basic, is the basis weight of the paper. So if we go back to our chart here, and since I decided 25 by 38 will be our example, let's say that we were manufacturing 25 by 38 inch sheets of 80 pound gloss text. The way that we would know it's 80 pound paper is that 500 sheets of 25 by 38, because that's the basic size of 80 pound gloss text, would weigh 80 pounds. If we were weighing 100 pound gloss text, 500 sheets of 25 by 38 100 pound gloss text would weigh 100 pounds. Another example is that if we have 500 sheets of 17 by 22 inch 20 pound bond copy paper, it would weigh 20 pounds. I'd like to note that pounds can be written in many ways. It usually is written as the pound sign that you'd see on your keypad on a phone. Um, in the printing industry, but you may also see it spelled out like pounds or abbreviated as LBS. For the most part, I will write the pound sign from here on out, so make sure that you can identify that the pound sign means pounds.